Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I, uh, I thought we'd have a look at this. Now um, this is the computer that I'm currently using to um, edit all my videos on. I used to have a uh, rather nice i7 system and then unfortunately last year um, something went wrong on the motherboard on it, I think on the DC to DC converter and it basically fried the CPU and it fried the RAM in it and um, I haven't had the spare funds um, free to replace it obviously you know, a decent i7 system is quite pricey um, so I basically relied on my Dell laptop to do most of my um, video editing and then unfortunately last year, uh, late last year that died to death and I've been uh, Basically, I begged, borrowed, and stole this off a friend of mine who uh, wasn't using it anymore. And it's a um, Core 2 Duo, um, 2.4 gig um, Core 2 Duo with um, 3 gig of RAM in it. And it's not really up to the job, to be honest. Um, it's better than the laptop I, uh, I was using, which was just a... Um, a core duo, the old um, core duo, just single core and uh, say a 20-30 minute video um, try to render it on that, it was taking like 4 and 5 hours to render like a 20-30 minute video um, with this I can render a 20-30 minute video in about 45-50 minutes um, on my i7 um, I could do a 25-30 minute video in about 15 minutes something like that um, so I'd really really like to try and um, see if I can upgrade this thing fortunately what I've found out is that the motherboard in this it's a um, oh I can't remember the new, um, model straight off, my head, off the top of my head but it's capable of taking a um, dual core um, quad processor so um, one of the core 2 quads rather than a um, core 2 dual, duo uh, it'll even take the uh, core 2 quad, uh, the core 2 duo extreme which is um, like the fastest best quad core um, duo processor you could um, fit this motherboard is capable of taking one uh, the problem with that is uh, even now, even though that them processors are you know archaic, um, they're going to be getting on for well over ten years old now. Uh, they're still surprisingly expensive. Um, I was actually quite shocked to see how much some of them um, top level processors for these things um, are still selling for on like eBay and AliExpress. So um, I've gone a slightly different, a um, slightly different way to um, upgrading this thing, and I'll uh, I'll show you what I've got and um, how we're going to upgrade this uh, this little computer here. Because I'll just get you up on my desk and I'll show you what I've bought and the re and my reasoning behind it. Because you'll think I'm probably a bit loony. Well, you think I'm a bit loony anyway because I run this channel, don't I? But ooh, let's get you up onto the uh, let's get you up onto the desk there so you can see it. Right there you go. And how am I going to upgrade that computer down there? What have I got? Ooh, well I went on um, eBay and from one of the um, computer e-waste recycling um, centres, I bought. Ooh, hang on a minute, it's bloody heavy. Ugh. Hey. I bought that. Uh, what we've got here is we have a Sun uh, 1U dual processor um, file server. It's a um, Xeon. Um, it's got a um, dual 5440 um, 2.8 gigahertz, uh, sorry 2.83 gigahertz um, Xeon processors in it and there's also 16 gig of RAM in here um, there are no hard drives in it, it was just this is basically what you get from these e-waste e recycler places basically I think they get paid to destroy the data 
Uh, they pull the hard drives out of these things. I think they chip the hard drives. They go in a great big macerator and get smashed up. And before these things actually end up going to e-waste to literally get chipped up themselves um, to make a few extra quid, um, they bang them on eBay and see what they go for. And this was sold as powers up to BIOS screen, no further testing done, no hard drives with it, and I paid the grand so the, the sorry the grand total of eighteen quid for it. Um, there was no delivery because the company selling it was also selling a really, really nice uh, 32 inch multi sync um, LCD monitor, uh, which was collect only, uh, which I picked up for 25 quid. Um, and I paid £18 for this, and obviously, because I was picking the monitor up, I didn't pay any postage on this. So, 18 quid has got me 16 gig of RAM. And it's got me a quad core processor. The problem being that the motherboard in here is a um, LGA um, 771 socket, and the old um, dual core down there is an LGA 775 socket. But all is not lost because there is a way you can modify a LGA 771 CPU to run in an LGA 775 CPU socket in that dual core board. And then we have to do a few little tricks to the BIOS because obviously the BIOS doesn't, doesn't know what a Xeon CPU is. It will actually run at that point, it's just that uh, like the benchmarking softwares and things like that will um, will not be particularly happy, they won't actually know what CPU are and the BIOS obviously will probably complain and say unknown CPU but it will, it should actually basically still run but what we can do is we can um, modify the microcode in the actual um, BIOS, it's an um, AMI BIOS in um, this computer and um, we can uh, modify the microcode in that so it actually thinks that it, it has always known what a uh, Xeon CPU is and it should work perfectly Anyway, let's uh, first before we do anything else, let's um, open this thing up and um, see uh, see exactly what we've got inside it. Now, I will say I have had this powered up. As the guy, as the description says, it will boot up to a BIOS screen. You can get into the BIOS. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be actually using this as a computer, even though it'd be great. And I did actually consider this. When I saw this thing online, um, I also had a look round for perhaps a case and um, motherboard that I could just use the two Xeon CPUs in. And I did find a um, a tower case, a server tower case, just the case from a motherboard. Um, no drives, no processors, no RAM, nothing. Uh, it was collect only, it was local to me, and um, it, opening bid was a fiver. And quite annoyingly, I forgot about it, and it sold for a fiver. Um, and I've not seen anything like that about after uh, since then, so I really missed out there uh, because I could have just just literally transplanted the CPUs and RAM out of this into it, and I'd have had a um, basically a dual pro a dual Xeon workstation. But um, hey ho, I will keep looking out for something like that. These turn up all the time on eBay on the usually especially if they're a bit beaten up like this it's no drive um, bays in it or anything and it's not in A1 condition you can pick them up dirt cheap but anyway let's get inside it and also uh, there is something wrong with this one in the RAID array I have tried connecting a couple of discs up to it identical SATA discs and um, although the uh, RAID card will pick up the DVD um, drive in here it won't pick any of the hard, any of the hard drives that I've tried to uh, run in it. It just doesn't recognise them at all. I don't know whether it's picky about what um, hard drives it runs with, or whether there is actually something wrong with that um, RAID card. I'm not sure. Like I said, I'm not really bothered about that. I'm not interested in the RAID card. Uh, what we're interested in is um, some of this RAM here. We've got four banks of um, it's DDR2 which is exactly the same as my um, dual core down there uses but these are um, four banks of four gigs so we've got four four gig bank, um, sticks here to give us our 16 gigs 
So two of them and uh, one of the processors basically is what we want. So we'll start, uh, we'll whip two of them, um, in fact I want something to put them in, I don't want to just uh, stick them down somewhere where they sta will get static damaged. I'm sure I've got an anti-static bag um, kicking round ready for this. Why do you never get organised when you think you're organised to do something like this and then uh, all of a sudden your organisation goes out the flaming window. I was sure I had an anti-static bag ready to go to put that ram in as soon as I took it out of that, um, that computer. Oops. Sorry folks, just bear with me, I'll be back as soon as I've um, just located an anti-static bag. Okay, I've got one slightly overkill, but it'll uh, it'll do the job for now. Right, so, let's just uh, earth myself on the radiator and make sure we're um, we're safe. And we'll, um, we'll get two of these round sticks out. I mean, the... God knows how much this server cost. It was made in 2009, so it's 10 years old. It's got to be like close to a grand, something like that, when it was new. I must have paid 18 quid for it. Uh, but we've got Hewlett Packard 4 gig um, DDR2 RAM. Let's show you there. They're all identical as well. So we'll take two of them out. We'll put them in this static bag just for the safekeeping until we get them in the uh, in the computer that they're going in. So let's get them out and put them in there so they're safe. And put them to one side until we can get to working on the um, computer itself. Right, let's put them away. And then we'll get to um, getting the processor out. There is loads of. Ri I mean, I could yeah, I could have bought the RAM, and I could have bought the CPU, and I could have probably bought one set of RAM and the CPU for not much more than twenty quid, probably including postage and everything, say twenty five quid, something like that. What that wouldn't have given me is. Let's just pull it out. Nice front loading. DVD-ROM drive. It's in a caddy here, but basically, if you were to take it out of that caddy, it is just a bog-standard um, laptop-style slot mount. It's nice because it's slot mount rather than um, a jet, uh, tray mount, a jet one. Uh, DVD drive. So we've got that. We've got all these really cool fan modules here. I think these literally just like pull out as a, yeah they do. They pull out as a single module with two incredibly powerful fans on them. I bet you I could probably make most of my uh, money, if not all my money, back. Because all this works. Uh, the motherboard itself is not in a good state. But all these work. It sounds like a, um, a fighter jet setting up when you fire this thing up. When all these, um, all these fans fire up. But I'm say all this works. Uh, the only major problem with it is there's a lot of blown caps. I mean, amazing, like I said, it does still boot up, you can get to the BIOS, you can um, do everything else. But there is a lot of caps on the motherboard which have started to leak and swell. So, um, that's another reason why I wouldn't really pursue it much further as a computer in itself. It is really a part stripper, but like I said, 18 quid. Oh, I've got to show you, before I even start taking that, I've got to show you these as well. This is another thing why I said it was worth buying rather than just buying the uh, RAM and the CPUs. It has two. Because you've got redundancy, remember it's a file server, but you've got two of these power supplies. And these output, I mean obviously I'd have to make up some kind of connections for them, but these things output um, 12 volts at 54 amps and uh, 3 volts at 3 at 3 sorry 3.3 volts at 3 amps but you've like I said 12 volts at 54 amps and I've got two of them 
I mean, if you wanted a, a juicy high volt, high um, current 12 volt power supply, you'd happily pay 10 quid each for them, wouldn't you? So like I said, it, just as um, a stripper for all the parts I can get out of it, let alone the CPU and RAM, it was, I'm absolutely over the moon with it. And it was a nice drive up to uh, Runcorn to pick it up, which is funny, it's about 30, 40 minute drive away from where I live, so. Oh, and check these out. Bloody hell, that's heavy. I mean, these are, these are custom to the actual server, but. These are solid copper. They weigh a ton. Heat sinks. So I won't be using these in the build, but I am sure I can come up with a really, really cool project, possibly some kind of power amplifier or something, using these um, copper heat sinks. And that leaves that gets us actually down onto the um, down onto the CPU, and it is rather filthy with old. Um, scrape some of that off with my finger actually the old heat sink compound it's rather baked I'll scrape some of that off with my finger before we get it out of the socket so we don't really want to get that on the bottom of the um, CPU especially seeing we've got things we need to do down there on the bottom of the CPU to actually get this thing um, up and running the way we want it to right so with these, it's just little um, cap class. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit. Uh, let's, I don't know how well we can get you in here. We'll get you down. There right, we go. Right, can you see here? Right, basically, we've got the um, processor um, here. And it's quite easy to release these. All we do is push in, pull that out, lift that little lever up, lift the trap door up. In fact, it's exactly the same as a um, LGA 775 socket. And we can lift the Xeon CPU out. There we go. I'll shut that up there so we don't, uh, we don't risk damaging it. Not that it really matters, I don't suppose. But um, there is our new just gentle with it, but there is our new Xeon CPU for, will that focus, let me zoom you out and see if I can get this thing to ooh, will it focus, I don't know I don't know if you can um, read that or not actually but it says, oh you wouldn't have read that unless um, you could read upside down but it says um, Intel E5440, which is the um, code for the 2.83 gig um, Xeon. Um, Intel Xeon, um, Costa Rica, 2.83 gigahertz, 12 megabytes, which is, I think is the cache, and um, 133 megahertz, sorry, 1333 megahertz, which I think is the front side bus on it. So it's definitely. Um, Front side bus and everything com is definitely compatible with that um, dual core that I've got down there. The problem that we have is, I think I've got a, yeah this is an old, uh, this one doesn't matter at all, it's an old Celeron. But I've got a, um, this is a um, LGA775 motherboard, this one's no good. Well, when I say no good, uh, this one won't take a... Um, quad core processor you're actually stuck with a, a maximum of two cores on this it's just too old but um, we take it still is um, LGA775 rather than LGA771 um, if we get the CPU out of it I'll show you what the difference is if it'll release its CPU come on you little bugger there we go So that is a LGA 775 CPU. Right, so it's an old seller on that. And if you can look at the top there, what we can see, can you see that little um, gold arrow? And then can you see these two tabs there and there? Well, if I bring in.
This one here is the Xeon, and this one here is the um, Celeron. So this is a LJ771 socket. This is LJ775. And if you look, with both arrows, both gold arrows, are both pointing the same way. But if you look at the tabs, the tabs are actually different. You can see there, they're actually on a different side. And that's our first problem. So if we actually put that... Um, If we actually put that Xeon CPU there in the board, it'd actually fit the wrong way around in the actual board. It would fit in the wrong orientation because them tabs are cut in a different place. And that's the first problem that we've got to overcome, is how we get that CPU to fit in that socket. In Well, I can show you on this one. So it's um, just a, a scrap board. This is, we can't use this board for the project, but we can show use it to demonstrate this. If we get the yeah, there's the um, this is the seller on CPU, and this is the socket. Now, if we look on the socket somewhere, there should be a little. You know, this is a really, really old one. So on this one, it's actually um, it's actually marked by a little bit of the corner that's cut off um, there. I don't know if you can mark that out, but that corner is cut off. But you basically line that triangle up with that cut off corner, and the CPU will um, go in like that, like that. Sorry, yeah, that's in. You can see that cut off corner there lines up with that um, gold triangle. Now. If we try and line up that with the Celeron, sorry, with the uh, Xeon CPU, as you can see, it won't go in. They're lined up, but the CPU won't drop in the holes because them tabs don't line up. So we've got two options. We can either take a knife and we can cut them two little tabs off the motherboard and then the Xeon CPU will sit straight in there. I mean we can't use it like that but it will actually fit. This is the first thing we need to do is physically make the CPU fit. So we can basically do that. We can modify this socket there like that and like I said it will um, then drop in. The problem with doing that is basically one slip when you're cutting them two things off and you're going to go right into all them tiny little pins in the bottom of the socket there and you damage one of them and it's game over for this board you just chuck the board away so it is risky doing that way you've got another option though that is actually the option that I think most people use your other option is if you look at the actual CPUs that's just PCB material it's just in fact it's not even I don't even think it's even fiberglass I think it's um, phenolic resin So what we can do, we've got the cellar on there, is we can actually take a file and very, 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 very gently we can file the cellar on, oops, sorry, we can file the cellar on um, notches there actually into the Xeon processor. So basically we copy the notches off that one onto that one. And I think that's what we're going to do in this um, in this instance. I'm going to get a file and what we'll do is we'll take the two processors, the seller on one there, I think this is right. Basically, if I line the two processors up like that, and I transfer them marks onto the um, off the Celeron processor onto the Xeon processor, and then I take a little file, I can actually file them two um, divots into the um, Xeon processor, so it will then fit in the. Um, 
LGA775 socket. Now, once we've actually got it to fit in the socket, we can't, still can't actually use this processor. Um, it won't work because what Intel did in their infinite wisdom is they um, swapped two of the pins over on the bottom of the process to make it so even if you modified the socket it still wouldn't be compatible with an LGA um, 775 motherboard but some brilliant little entrepreneur I am sure probably over in China or somewhere like that came up with this and you can see that there in that packet and that that's a little adapter and it's a tiny little bit of um, flexible PCB with some holes cut in it and what that does is it actually sticks over literally sort of like like that it actually sticks in place over the bottom of the um, CPU in a specific place and it swaps them two pins around so um, the motherboard will actually work with that processor so I think that's what we're going to do next um, we will get a very fine file out and we'll actually mark off the places on the CPU where um, where the little holes should be and we'll transfer them over onto the um, Xeon processor over there and then we can use we can just use this um, old uh, motherboard here as a test motherboard and if we can get the Xeon processor to successfully fit in here then it should be good to fit in the uh, motherboard in the actual um, computer that we're working on so I will um, I'll just pause you, I'll get my um, files and the bits and bats we need and we'll see if we can get that um, processor to uh, fit the LGA um, 775 socket so uh, back very shortly okay we're back and um, I've got my file I've got a marker pen I've also um, I managed to find my anti-static strap so I am um, grounded here and I'm actually I've put the top back on that server because I thought the metal top would make a great uh, working surface for doing this so um, without further ado let's um, let's look into doing this we've got the um, got the cellar on the bottom and let's see how so let's look, we've got the Celeron and we've got the arrow on the Celeron pointing downwards like that. And let's flip the Xeon over and let's orientate that the same way. Right, and what we're going to do... In fact, those are exactly the same distance apart, aren't they? It's just that they're on different... Um, they're on different sides. So... Hmm. If I was to flip that directly over like that, and then I line the two chips up like that, and take my pen, and put a little dab, make sure they're perfectly lined up, which they are. Put a little dab of paint there, both. Right. And we'll turn that back over. So that was that lined up with there. And we do the same on the other side. So we tip that over like that. We line them up so they're perfectly together like that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Let me try and just bring you up a little bit. And the good thing is, if I do mess this up, I've got another one to play with. Because where if I mess the motherboard up, um, I've screwed up my only motherboard that will actually take a Xeon processor. Well, actually, I might have another one coming. Because uh, someone else has said they've got a Xeon, that, uh, sorry, not a Xeon, that, uh, they've got an old dual core that I can have. But if that doesn't come, I'll be right royally stuffed, so... I'd rather bugger up one of these processors than bugger up my main board. Right, so, in theory, where I've got them two marks there and there on that Xeon processor, if I file a little bit away like on that, then that processor 
should, in theory, fit in that um, fit in the socket of the motherboard that I've got over here, which I'll show you once we've actually uh, filed this away and we're going to actually uh, do a test fit. So this is the moment of truth. We can't really go back now. What we've got to do is basically using the file. Just get it started on that side where we put the black mark. Oops. And then we can turn it over because what we don't want to do when we're filing away is file that actually file down into where the um, where the pins are. But now we know where we need to file the pin. Keep checking. Right, there we go. We'll stop at that on that side and we'll move over and we'll do the same on the um, other side of the chip. So we need to start there. That's where I put my mark. So we're in the right place. Yeah. And again, now we've got a mark. We can turn this round and we can. don't want to go too deep so I said we definitely don't want to go into them little gold pins okay let's try that so we've got them two bits marked away there and there yeah they seem to be in the right place judging it from the um, judging it from that Celeron processor so let's bring this um, scrap board in up that way, going to oops. So, if this is right, let's make sure we've got the right processor. That's the Xeon. Let's just check the um. So, if this is right, we take the um seller on, line it up, and the seller on lines up perfectly. That fits in the socket, that would lock in place if we uh. If we felt so desired like that, so let's see if the Xeon will do the um, do the same thing. Let's get that solar out of the way. Let's try the uh, let's try the Xeon. So again, we line the uh, line the arrow up, drop the Xeon in. doesn't that one goes in there I think we need a little bit more just off on this side here that side there drops in perfect I think this side here just needs the tiny I do mean a tiny amount as well yeah it just needs a tiniest little bit more off on that and it won't take much off the other side seemed absolutely fine but this side here I think just needs another okay I don't want to go any further than that because I don't like I said I don't want to risk going into them um, I don't want to risk going into them pins so let's give that a try line that up this time perfect it drops straight in and just to prove it put that down and that locks into position now so we now have actually have a Xeon processor which will physically fit a um, LGA 7, 775 um, socket on one of these motherboards like I said we won't actually work we can't actually use it I'm sure actually was to plug it in in this state we may actually do some damage to the uh, motherboard and probably the CPU 
because what we need to do next is apply this little bodge to the bottom of this to um, actually solve that issue but we're not going to do that today that's going to be in the um, next part of this video in the next part of this video we will actually finish off doing this um, CPU modification in fact have we got something ah yeah what we'll do is we'll put a little CPU box here so we'll put that in there like that the reason I'm not doing it today is I've ordered some um, fine tweezers to actually fit that so um, when my fine tweezers arrive hopefully they should be here tomorrow um, I'll make part two and we'll actually get that um, CPU finished off I will also go into um, what we need to do to the BIOS to actually um, get the BIOS to recognize this CPU I've actually already let me get you up onto the computer Oops, you can't see it very well from there, can you? Just trying to swing you around. Oops. You might be able to see it from there. Yeah, you can see it well enough. Um, where was I up to? What was I saying then? I've confused myself now by moving. Oops. I've confused myself now by moving that flaming, uh, that flaming thing ground. And what have I done? I've knocked my mouse off as well. Oh no, my mouse is there. Anyway, I'm sure it wasn't important. What I was going to do is quickly show you um, like a speed check on this computer as it is now. And then we can do... Oh, that's what I was saying. I was saying about the BIOS, weren't I? Um, I've already created a custom BIOS for this. to inst I'm not installed it on the computer yet, so you can watch me do that. And um, hopefully that will go okay. But I've um, basically, I've created a... Um, custom BIOS for, for it. I downloaded the latest BIOS for AMI BIOS for the motherboard that I've got in here and what I did was I basically took the microcode out of that BIOS that was to do with any of the old Pentium 4 um, CPUs and I replaced it with microcode for the um, Xeon CPUs. You can't just add the Xeon CPUs for with the particular BIOS that I'm working on. Some you can, there's enough room in there. This one you couldn't. I had to get rid of some of the old ones that we're not going to be using. Like I said, and then I put new microcode into the BIOS, which actually is um, the microcode for the Xeon um, CPU. So I'll show you a bit about that. Um, and then we'll have a go at flashing that BIOS to this computer. And then we will... Um, actually crack the computer open and we will um, install the modded CPU and we'll install that 8 gig of um, DDR2 RAM 8 gig is the absolute maximum that that motherboard will take so we're basically taking that um, computer up to the maximum you really can um, so let's just, let's just uh, run CPU ID now and um, at least that gives you an idea what the performance of the computer is at the moment and then we can have a look what the performance of the computer is uh, when we've actually finished and we've actually finished the um, upgrades. So we can see, let me see if I can zoom you in on um, this. Sorry about the angle. Hopefully you can read that. But we've got a Core 2 Duo E4600, um, obviously an LGA um, 775 socket. Um, the speed is. Core speed is 2.4 mega. Uh, sorry, 2.4 um, gigahertz. Um, obviously, it's got two cores. Uh, memory. We've got um, DDR2. We've got three gigabytes. Let's see what the benchmark um, does. Um, we'll have a quick look at the um, benchmark on it. See what this benchmark's at now and then we'll have a look what um, it benchmarks at when we've actually uh, done the upgrade on it and see whether it's made much of an improvement obviously the extra amount of RAM in it and stuff like that's going to make a huge um, a huge difference as well but I think this is, uh, obviously I can't afford um, to build I'm even looking at like i3's and stuff like that and at the moment I'm struggling for money at the moment for 
things that are uh, essential and unfortunately a new super hot computer isn't essential at the moment um, so let's see how much uh, mileage we can get out of this whole thing if we we'll basically upgrade it out to the max well there we go anyway what we're getting on the benchmark um, 212.3 um, single thread multi thread is 388.1 so um, we'll see if we can get that to improve with the um, with the upgrades. Anyway, I'm going to leave this video here now. Anyway, because it's going to otherwise it's going to drag on far too long, and I'm going to try to keep my videos to you know perhaps 40 minutes maximum um, for most of them. I mean, obviously, some videos are going to drag on lo longer than that, but I'd rather make two 40 minute videos than one like hour and a half long epic. Um, and also it helps a little bit with the editing and the uploading it. The editing is not so much of an issue. Uh, rendering it obviously the whole reason we're doing this is one of the issues and then it's uploading it because my broadband um, is pretty dire. My upload speed on my broadband is not good. Um, I'm hoping by the end, well at least by the middle of this year I may actually be able to upgrade to fibre. They're putting all the fibre um, infrastructure in uh, around where I live at the moment, but I uh, I refuse to go with Virgin Media. I've had um, issues with them in the past, um, so I'm going to see what I'm going to have to do there. Anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm going to leave this video here for now. I said I hope you find that useful and um, look out for part two when we actually get this thing. Uh, well, at least we can see if we can get this thing up and running and running on the um, Xeon processor. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.